Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Horn Call Podcast. This episode is for December 2021. It will be the final episode of the Horn Call Podcast for this year, and I hope that it has been a good one for you all. Uh, to all of my friends, colleagues, uh, and in the horn playing world, um, I wish you the best for the end of this year and the beginning of a new year. Uh, my guest for today's episode is a good friend of mine, uh, Darren Robbins. We go back a long way. Uh, Dr. Robbins and I first met at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Uh, of, gosh, it's been probably about close to 20 years ago now. Um, and we've uh, stayed in contact ever since. Uh as often happens with careers and things, you, you never quite know where <laughs> where things are going to take you. And Darren's career has taken him uh, all the way across the world to Thailand, where he is uh, instructor of horn and uh, in charge of a number of other things at Mahidan University, one of the largest uh, schools of music in Southeast Asia. And uh, he's going to share a little bit with you about his journey and about his wonderful website, Horn Excerpt org, which uh, even if you don't know Darren's name, you've probably used his website at some time or another. It uh, got started as kind of an independent venture and then now is part of the IHS uh, website, uh, something that Darren very generously agreed to uh, a number of years ago. So without further delay, here's my conversation with Darren Robbins. Well, yeah. Thanks, thanks again for speaking with me today, Darren. It's uh, it's good to see you, even if it's not in person. It's, I think the last time I saw you in person was probably at the Los Angeles IHS Symposium in probably twenty fifteen. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So, and then yeah. um, I have really fond memories of our our faculty brass uh, trio going to Thailand in, in two thousand twelve. So, for me, that was. I had been to Southeast Asia, but not for a long time. And so that visit in 2012 was really eye opening for me. Um, so I think maybe a good a good place to start would be to kind of talk about uh, as briefly as you want or as extensively as you want, kind of your career path into the position that you have at Mahidan University in, in Thailand, because I think, you know, a lot of people know who you are through your horn excerpts.org uh, uh, contribution, which is now part of the IHS website. Uh, if they don't know who you are, they should, because chances are they've listened to all those excerpts when they're preparing for a lesson or an audition. So they have you to thank for that. But uh, we can kind of we can get to that later. But maybe just kind of explain what you're doing right now and how you kind of ended up where you are. Sure. Um, well, gosh, I, I I came here in 2008. So now I've been here, what is it, thir 13 years? Am I doing the math right? Mm -hmm. Yep. I, I didn't major in math, but I think, that, <laughs> I think that's 13, um, which is quite a bit longer than I thought I'd be here. But um, before, before I came here, well, I, I can back up to, um, you know, I... Like you, I did my, my, my doctoral degree at, at University of Wisconsin-Madison with, with Doug Hill, um, which is a great experience, and that is kind of a common thread between a lot of us horn players, mm -hmm. having studied in Madison and studied with Doug. Um, and then from there, um, as, as I was finishing, I, had, I, I taught a couple of years at UW La Crosse as an adjunct position. And then just after finishing, I had a one-year job in Pennsylvania, and then after that, ended up in Louisiana, which was not so far from you, I remember. Mm -hmm. Yep, we um, ran into each other a couple of times, I believe. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but it, it still wasn't the position. It wasn't like a 10-year track position. It wasn't the, you know, the position I wanted to keep for a long time. So at that time, I was, I was still just sending applications everywhere, as you do at that point in your career, you know, not, not being too discriminating. And so I... You know, I was looking at the ads and sending applications and tapes here, and on, well, there it was. There's this ad for Mahidon University in Thailand, and I was like, well, that's crazy, but I have the I have everything ready to go, so it's just another envelope to throw in the mail, right? Um, and 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 didn't really think anything of it, you know, didn't didn't expect anything, but but um, maybe a month later, I got a phone call from the trumpet teacher here and said, hey, you know, we got your application, we we looked at it, it. Looks like you know something we might be interested in. Would you like to talk about it? I'm like, well, well, sure, we can we can talk. <laughs> and um, so we, we talked a little bit, um, 
which which led to more conversations and then led to you know can you send us some more material one of the unique things about this is there was no campus visit as there always would be in the u.s just mm -hmm. the logistics of flying i mean you you've done it james you've, you've flown that the u.s to a 24-hour slog mm -hmm. um on, on a plane and so most of the time when we hire new people it's, it's mostly just done through through references and extensive phone interviews but so it came to the point where, yeah, we'd like to offer you the position. And I'm like, oh, oh my God. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, like any American, you know, I, I had never imagined myself living outside of America. You know, I thought maybe I'd visit Europe someday or something like that. But mm -hmm. honestly, if you would have given me a, a blank map of the world, and, and told me to point to Thailand, I, I would have failed. <laughs> I, I could have told you that Australia is this big thing down here, and China is something up, and, and then Thailand somewhere in there in the middle. But it, Thailand, Taiwan, Vietnam, Cambodia—I don't know, you know. But um, you know, it just—it had never even entered my mind that I would probably even visit Asia. But so I was like, well, am, am I going to do this? Am I going to? You know, am I going to move literally halfway around the world? Um, and so, yeah, I, I talked to my family and talked to Doug and, you know, and this kind of thing and and decided, yeah, well, why not? You know, I, at that point, I was still young-ish, young enough, you know, that I could say it's going <laughs> to be an adventure for a couple of years and get some good experiences. And, and so I went, um, packed everything up, put almost everything I own in my parents' basement and, and took what I could fit in, in two bags because that's what you're allowed on most international flights is just two bags and arrived in thailand and um and then i mean it just then after that it just kind of happened it was it was a different experience in a lot of ways for sure a lot of things are different um but a lot of things different um you know in a in a refreshing way too you know mm -hmm. um not not just different in a in a different way but you know like oh this is you know and and the one one thing i appreciated is especially at that point it was still kind of a new program and, and just so much potential and so much opportunity to, to help it grow and and to make a difference and 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 even kind of make a name um as opposed to being in the u.s where you know i i was in louisiana so were you and so so were like three other horn teachers all within you know, all within like two hour drive mm -hmm. and and coming to coming to thailand um you know, this this is this the the biggest school in Thailand by far the big biggest music school and, and and probably even in Southeast Asia and so just me doing here what I would have been doing anywhere in the U.S. I, I would kind of got attention for it just because I was doing it in a strange and exotic place. Um, so yeah. I, I was here. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was no, going to no. say no. It it. Well, I think you're selling yourself short because obviously you have you have. Uh, incredible organizational skills and the right personality and the right demeanor to just kind of take a position like that and, and turn it into what, what you've done. Um, looking back on those early days when you were sort of making that transition into this job in, in Thailand, are there, are there things that stand out to you now looking back on it? Like, Oh gosh, that was, that was a, a major moment where like, this was what was going to become the job where I wanted to be for a while. Cause like you said, you thought maybe you'd be there for a few years, but at some point there was like a moment or moments where you're like, okay, this, I, I think this is going to work out. Yeah, it was, <clears throat> it, it wasn't just one moment. It was a series of, of moments that collectively I couldn't ignore anymore. Um, so, you know, maybe the first one, you know, in my very first year, I was, I was really lucky to come into a, just a class of great horn students and enthusiastic, motivated horn students. And I've, I, I've, I've probably told this story before, but they, they, they came to me like in the third month of my teaching there and said, oh, we want to, we want to create this horn ensemble to go to competitions. <laughs> and I was like, what? No, no. And you, you, horn, horn ensembles don't win competition. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I was thinking. And I didn't say it out loud, but that's what I was thinking. You know, brass quintets and string quartets and even saxophone quartets, those, you know, but, you know, you don't send a horn choir to, to fish off or, or whatever, but they, 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 they wanted to do this, this local competition. It was Thailand International Wind uh, it's changed names now, but it was it's, it's, it's kind of an international competition, but it was in Thailand, and they had a, a chamber music category, and it's like so okay, let's let, let's go, let's try, and and they they worked really hard, harder than I've ever seen anybody work on on a horn choir before, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and and they won the competition, they surprised everybody, they won first place, and that that was one of the moments is like wow, these these kids they're 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 good and they're capable of 
focusing and buckling down, you know, mm -hmm. and exceeding ex exceeding what I even had expected. And and that win kind of lit a fire under them. And then, so their next goal then was to go to an international horn symposium. And the next one at that point was Brisbane. And so they went to Brisbane and Brisbane had a, a, a horn ensemble competition and they won first place there too. And then that really kind of lit their fire. And um, so th this go they, they called themselves Horn Pure. Mm -hmm. And and from there they 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 performed and competed. After that, mostly just performed. Um, they they performed in London, um, the London Symposium. They performed at the Texas Symposium in Denton. Um, they performed most recently uh, at a horn horn uh, festival in Tokyo. Um, and, and that group is kind of, as, as student groups do, you know, the, the members have graduated and gone on, and some of them are still around, but it's, it's not active mm -hmm. regularly okay. anymore. But they do, they do get together and, 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 and perform every now and then when they can. Mm -hmm. But that, that was one of the things, you know, just the, the, the students were, were, were just fantastic. And the, the mentality of the students here in general, um, I, I, I like to say they're hungrier than than some of the students I taught in the U.S. Mm. In that, you know, um, I, I guess it's, you college going to a university here is is not a given. In the U.S., it's just expected you're going to go to a, a university, mm -hmm. but here it's still something of a, a privilege, and and they're and so they they. they I'm talking in very broad strokes, but they, mm -hmm. they, 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 they work hard, and they're happy to work hard. They're happy to work together, and and they're really happy when they can represent Thailand in a in a in a good way, you know. Mm -hmm. And and they've they've been good at doing that. So, that 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 was one of the big things that ended up keeping me. Um, one of the other another thing that kept me is just the 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 opportunities I have here of. Um, organizing things and meeting people and and before you hit record we we're talking about the, the brass and percussion conference yeah um yeah. and and so that's something i did you know when i was department chair I'm, I'm not department chair anymore um but when i was and when i say department chair i mean the brass and percussion department um we we organized three brass and percussion conferences um we called them and they were just basically small scale something like a regional horn workshop except they were not specific to horn they were all brass and percussion mm -hmm. um and so like for example one of the groups we brought in for that was the american horn quartet and you know i, I grew up <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know I, I just grew up i i have like a very distinct memory my freshman year at i Iowa and, and my, my, my teacher Kristen Thielander putting in she was so giddy she put in their newest CD I'd never heard of this group before and, and, and hearing hearing that and hearing Charlie, Charlie Putnam's low notes I was like oh my god I had no idea you know and, and so it was just a kind of like a, a pinch me moment like oh my gosh the, the American horn quartet these idols are, are, are here and I can I can reach out and, and, and touch them <laughs> you know, it's, right right yeah so I mean it's stuff like that and then there's been many many of, of those opportunities along the way of you know people coming here who I never would have dreamt of even like saying hi to um <laughs> Yeah. Well, and, it's, and I think it's worth mentioning too. You were so uh, Mahidon University is it's not in Bangkok. It's kind of outside the city, but it's still more or less, you know, in in that in that part of the country. And so that's like a major destination for lots of people mm. from from all over the world. And I think I remember you mentioning at some point like, well, everybody wants to come to Thailand because of because of Bangkok. And so it, it's it works out well that the university's there and that, you know, artists, you mentioned the London, the London Symphony coming to, to the university and the Berlin Philharmonic. And so those are, you know, it's a major stop on on those kind of tours. It is, and it, 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 you're right. It being that you know Bangkok and Thailand in general is a, it's a tourist destination, so, and we, we don't have to work too hard <laughs> to to get people to say yes to, to come here, um, and and sometimes they even like you know invite themselves. <laughs> They're like, hey, <laughs> no, I mean, but but it's great. But I mean, that's that's happened, you know, mm -hmm. um, like. Hey, we're going to be in, in, in Singapore, you know, would you be interested in, in, in having us? Because they know we're here, they know we have facilities, and, mm -hmm. and we're like, yeah, great, please. <laughs> please. And yeah, yeah. So oh, like, I, stuff I, like that has been great, too. No, I, and you mentioned facilities. I have I have to mention, I, you know, the facilities, when, when my group went there in 2012, were just mind-blowing, and I'm sure they've only gotten better. I think you, there was a, a massive concert hall in the works that wasn't 
wasn't finished yet, and I'm sure it's it's finished now. I think I've seen pictures maybe online or something. You, uh, is, m- could you mention that concert hall? Because it's worth just in and of itself, just the architecture and just this this major you know major thing at your university. Yeah, it's 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 really it's a it's a world class concert hall. It's um, I'll tell you a little bit the story of how it came to came to be. It is um, our university wanted to build a facility to hold graduation ceremonies because the big graduation ceremony was always held out on a soccer field outside in 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 the heat and they they, they just wanted something in indoors to and that that was really their only criteria is just something indoors they're basically going to build a big barn or something like that you know just a, you know just something with a roof and speakers you know the, you know a, a, a convention center conference center something like that and and our dean at the time said no if we're going to build something one and one, I'll back up a little bit one of the criteria is that it has to seat 2000 people uh, um, that's how many they you know so it had to be quite a big place and our dean at the time said well if we're going to build something like that why don't we do it right and actually build build a hall you know build a hall like with great acoustics you know because we need that we have this great you know this huge mm-hmm. school of music here and had to fight a little bit because of course you know a hall with all the equipment and you know we hired a, mm-hmm. a an acoustical engineering firm from germany to get it right you know and that's 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 money that you don't have to spend on a barn. <laughs> it's right, like, right. you know, um, if you're just going to build something and put speakers in it, that's not so bad. So, but, but um, it got done. So it, it still had to meet the, the university's criteria of 2000 seats. Um, so it's quite a large hall. Um, this is large, like the Berlin Philharmonic Hall is 2000 something, a little bit bigger. You know, mm-hmm. some halls are, you know, like 1300 to 1500, you know, so we're on the, the, the larger end. Of, of of a concert hall, but it, it's 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 very good. It's the the acoustics are, are great. Um, it has a pit. It's you know it, you can do anything. And and you mentioned we uh, it was like three three four years ago now we brought two big orchestras, London mm-hmm. Symphony and Berlin Philharmonic. And the reason for doing that is to kind of just prove that you know hey this is a hall that is good enough for the best orchestras in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, right. And so it's, yeah we're really lucky to to have that. And if I remember correctly, there was some kind of connection to the the king of Thailand, or that's right. It's, it, it, it's, yeah, it's named after the king, the 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 former king's son. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, um, yeah, Prince, Prince Mahidon was the the. If I'm getting that right, I hope <laughs> I hope I'm not getting my Thai history a little bit wrong, but it's something like that. It's this. I think it's the son. Or, or no, maybe it's his father. So I'm going to get corrected on this <laughs> later on. I think it's the father of the king. I'm pretty sure that's right. But yeah, it, it definitely has to do with the royal family. Mm-hmm. And that, I mean, you know, you can't beat that in terms of support for your 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 discipline and for the art form. <laughs> yeah, think, yeah, that's right. I think I remember you telling me that you know, the state of classical music in Thailand was kind of in a fledgling place where there was just a lot of excitement and a lot of, you know, enthusiasm for it. And, you know, I got to say, I was a little bit jealous about that because it's it can't necessarily be said of everywhere that people are excited about classical music. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, but, you know, and it's still... It's still a you know it's still a, a battle we fight, especially now we we have I, I, we have a two thousand seat concert hall, and that's a lot of seats to fill, uh-huh. especially when you're not especially when you're not in the middle of Bangkok. Like you said, we're we're a suburb of Bangkok. We're about twenty twenty five kilometers outside, mm-hmm. um, and but we're getting there. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's 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 a step by step process because right. there the, there is a lot of excitement. Um, among the students, among the younger generation, um, for classical music, and it's it's that that's good. Um, but the the other side of that is Thailand. Uh, if you're comparing it to Europe, for example, Thailand doesn't have a long, long history of classical music in its mm-hmm. in its culture. It has maybe I don't know twenty or thirty years, whereas Europe it goes back to yeah you know Beethoven Begin- or the beginning, you know, yeah. Mozart, yeah. the beginning Bach yeah. you know and, yeah. and it's, <laughs> it's just part of their culture and so you go to proms you know one of the proms concerts in London and they're standing room only every night and right. um we we haven't reached that level of, of saturation yet but it's it's fun to be on the side of keeping it keeping it going keeping it building you mm-hmm. know that's so it's a good a good challenge to have you know mm-hmm. thinking big and then trying to fulfill those big thoughts mm-hmm. for sure now stepping back just a little bit um so 
part of your duties at, at Mahidan, you teach the Horn students and you have a studio class, I assume. Um, you were at one point chair of the, the department and you have uh, a position with the Thailand Philharmonic. Uh, did that come with the job at Mahidan or did that sort of develop along the way? I, I, I can't remember exactly uh, how that worked out. Um, honestly, a little bit of both. You know, okay. way back when at the beginning, I, I did audition, but the, the, also having said that, the teachers are kind of expected to to play. Mm -hmm. And um, it, I'll talk a little bit about the orchestra because it's unique. The the orchestra is a the Thailand Phil. We call it Thailand Phil now instead of Thailand Philharmonic Orchestra mm -hmm. um, because that's too many syllables. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just Thailand Phil. Uh, it, it's a professional orchestra. It's a paid orchestra. Um, mm -hmm. Some many of the members are are teachers. I would say thirty or forty percent are teachers, um, but the rest of them are, you know, just other musicians in the community. Um, mm -hmm. Many of them are are alumni, um, and and that's good. But it is so. It's it's operated by the university, but it's not a student orchestra. Or you know, or some some universities have orchestras where it's students and the, the principals come in and play the, the principals. You know, it's not that. It's a, it's a professional orchestra. It's a, a, it's, its own separate paycheck. Um, and, and so it's, and we, we, we operate it at the highest level we can, which is, is of course, it's not Berlin, but it's, 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 it's pretty good. I, I'll, I'll say it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a pretty good orchestra. We, you know, we, we do all of the, the big rep we do. Right now, we do 20 programs um, in a season, mm -hmm. 20 weeks. Um, there was a point where it was 30 weeks, but that was just a little bit too much. Um, mm -hmm. We might get back to that, at, you know, so we've kind of adjusted. It went from 10 to 30, and like, well, that was a big jump, so now we're kind of back down to mm -hmm. 20. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I can talk a little bit about, I, I found myself in the position of being the manager of this orchestra, which is, is something I didn't expect. <laughs> but but yeah, if you if you would yeah, like yeah. to there's a there, there's a story how how this happened and it, it goes back a, a few years to you you, you mentioned we hosted a, a couple orchestras we hosted the London Symphony Orchestra and then a couple months later we hosted the Berlin Philharmonic um, so two of the you know the best known orchestras and so these projects needed somebody who is really kind of able to put all the pieces together and organize it because this is there's a lot of moving parts it's not as simple as they just kind of fly and get on the bus and then come to the concert hall and play there's a lot of moving parts and i, I didn't know too i had to learn but yeah, i mean the point is somebody had to learn and mm -hmm. i was nominated um, <laughs> um and someone, someone volunteered you probably so, someone volunteered me but i was like yeah. well, okay that, that's cool I'm, I'm 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 hip with that you know i'll <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be, you know, because it was, you know, these big, big orchestras. It was, it was Berlin. Dudamel was conducting. It's like, sure, I'll, 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 yeah. I'll, 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 I'll rub, you know, <laughs> rub, rub elbows with that. So um, it was a lot of work. It was a lot of details. I learned a lot um, about how to do it, and and, but overall, it it went, it went really well, and it was really fun. London was great. Um, when London was here, their their fourth horn at the time, his name was Jonathan. Jonathan Lipton, he, he was a fourth horn. And he's oh, okay. just really, really, really outgoing guy, an American. He was fourth horn in, in London for a long time. And I was talking to him and he's like, you know, so Berlin's coming. Berlin's coming in a couple months. I was like, yeah. I was like, I dare you to do something. I'm like, oh, what's that? I dare you. I, no, he said, I dare you not to do something. I dare you not to ask Sarah Willis to do a flash mob. <laughs> and and I and I, I it's actually a thought that I had, had crossed my mind is like because you know Sarah Willis she she's known for doing these mm -hmm. kind of high publicity things you know and it's like but I was like no I, I can't bother Sarah you know? <laughs> but then he dared me to do this and I, I I had just run into Sarah just like very superficially a couple times in, in different horn workshops but I'm sure she didn't really know who I was and but I, I sent her a message you know I said hey would you like to organize some kind of horn event and she was she was on it she's like yep absolutely I was like oh wow okay and so so then when Berlin rolled around we we it kind of it spiraled a little bit big but big is good so this this flash mob it was a multi-part thing um the, the the orchestra was staying in the peninsula which is one of the really super five plus five star you know plus hotels mm. on, on the river and so i i went to the peninsula and said 
hey, can we use your helicopter pad on, on the roof of there? It's like a 60 story building. They have a helicopter pad. Can we go up there and, and, and like play a short concert? And they're like, OK, you know, they, they couldn't say no because we were buying like you know, more than half of their hotel for three right, nights. So. Right. <laughs> so but I mean, it was just this, this, this like kind of great look location overseeing the river and all of Bangkok and so that that was step one we we went up there with with eight with Horn Pure with those eight students and and the Berlin Flash Mob and we played a concert for just a few VIPs just just 15 minutes it was just kind of more a photo shoot than anything and then from there um we went down, we got on one of the, the Peninsula Hotel's river boats mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. took a river ride about 20 minutes down to a riverside park where we had about 100 horn players waiting for us and got off the boat and there was a brass quintet to greet us and 100 horn players there and we had arranged the music and all this kind of stuff so we did this flash mob with 100 horn players and the Berlin Phil horn section I, and I was so impressed with you know, the Berlin horn players they were on this tour and they, they didn't have to do any of this but they did it happily you know that's one, one of the things that re was really impressed me is that you know they're just they don't they, they the, the on this tour they're playing two two different programs one was Shostakovich 5 the other one is Mahler 5 you know so it's, it's not light <laughs> it's not it's not you know like <clears throat> every other night you're playing one of those but they were they were happy to get on this river boat and go play with the kids and it was, it was just a great time and then took the river boat back to the hotel and had dinner with the Berlin Fieldhorn section, and it was, you know, and, and then of course the concert was was great too. It was, it was Mahler Five and 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 Dudamel conducting, and it was just kind of a, a pinch me moment. I as as the person kind of organizing <clears throat> all the events, I couldn't be in the audience, but that was actually better because I was most of the time I was standing backstage, like directly behind the bells, <laughs> you know, That's amazing. behind behind the, you know, of course there's a. Of an acoustic shield, but still, I could I could see through the cracks. I could, and just I just remember standing there in Mahler Five, just just with my jaw on the floor, like and, and, and picking it up, and it's like, and, and one of the staff came to me and it's like, Darren, we we really should go take care of this, and I'm like, no, no, we're we're I'm, I'm going to stay here for another five minutes because right. I'm not going to hear this ever again in my life. <laughs> so that's amazing. So, yeah. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it was it was just that's what I'm one of the opportunities of just like meeting these people and, and getting to talk a little bit to, to, to Dudamel, who is also just, you know, the nicest person. You know, I've mm -hmm. all these people that you, you think wouldn't even have to give you the time of day. They're the ones that are just you know, as generous as can be and, and, and nice and gracious. So so back back to the, the story that that went well. Um, and then this this kind of came at the time where there was a transition in in administration, our old dean, his term had finished and we were getting a new dean and the new dean um he didn't want like the day-to-day -day operations of the orchestra he, he wanted somebody else that could do that and i had just finished up these two projects and it had went really well and so asked me oh would you would you mind kind of being the manager of the orchestra um mm -hmm. i'm like mm, okay and that's it was another thing I was kind of excited about, actually, because, you know, I guess maybe you know as a musician in the orchestra, it's easy to sit there in your, your horn chair and kind of complain and think, oh, this is how this should be better. And, but, you know, you're complaining to each other, but that doesn't do any good, you know. Right. So right. Now, now, right. now I'm on the other side of it and, and, and able to make the changes sometimes, but I'm also able to better understand how difficult it is to change some things, you know, that mm -hmm. you would think it would just be obvious, just do it, just change it. But the, the difficulty is, you know, you can get everybody, it's easy to get everybody to agree something needs to be changed, but it's quite difficult to get them to agree how to change it. Yep. Because <laughs> there's, there's, there's always, there's always like 10 different ways to do it different. They can agree we need to do this different, but then trying to, which, which, which of these 10 ways are we going to do different? And that's where it's, and then sometimes, unfortunately, it's just easier not to change. <laughs> but, no, there's, there's, an, there's an inertia to, to organizations yeah. like that where once they've started down a path of, well, this is the way we do this. And everyone may recognize, well, this is not the best way we could be doing this, but this is just the inertia is carrying us in this direction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's where I've kind of learned. I've had to how, how to make a case, how to, you know, they call it buy in. You know, yeah, you have to get enough people around you to, to buy into your idea. Mm -hmm. um, or, or, or buy into, you know, or if you like somebody else's idea, buy into their idea to get enough momentum behind an idea, you know, and maybe in the end, it's not the idea you thought it was best, but it's better than what was. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, you don't always get the change you want, but it's a step-by-step -step process. It's at least it's progress. And so it's, 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 it's a job I enjoy doing most of the time. Um, 
it, it, it's also, you know, I, I play in the orchestra, so now I'm kind of straddling the line. Um, so I have to be on, mm-hmm. you know, be a musician, and, and but I also have to kind of be on the other side of, of, of making some tough decisions or announcing some tough decisions, too. Right. Now, what's, what's something like that the average music student wouldn't know about how an orchestra is run that might be worth them them knowing about that you've kind of uh, discovered in, in this in this career of, of being both a professional musician performing and then also being uh, in, in the, the managerial side of things. Yeah, um, this, off the top of my head, um, one thing that, uh, that even I wasn't really aware of is, is how complex the orchestra library is. Mm-hmm. Um, an, an orchestra librarianship is kind of a hidden art that you can't go to. There's no, you can't get a degree in orchestra librarianship. Um, it's just kind of something you learn by apprentice. You, you get a, you know, may, maybe you start by volunteering to be the librarian at your school orchestra or something like this, but it's a lot of very specific skills that you, it's really hard to figure it out on your own. I mean, that's an art to doing it. And, and, um, but it's, a really interesting job you know so I, I i sometimes i talk to my students like that you know because in, in 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 my orchestra we haven't had a, a trained professional orchestra library and so there's a lot of things about our library that still need to be improved because they were they were doing the best they could at the time um mm-hmm. but but they weren't asking questions and so I, I've, I've started asking questions and the more i ask the more i discover oh my gosh i just i don't know even a tenth of what what i need to what it is to keep all this music organized how to have the boeings marked the correct way and that, that's right. something completely because we don't think we're horn players right we don't think about boings right and that was like i remember the first time a string player complained to me about boings i'm like wait whoa oh you mean you don't usually do that I, I mean i just as a horn player we always mark our own stuff but in an orchestra the the boings are marked they have to be done very well and so i had to learn how to do that and now mm-hmm. that's improved and but that's a a job that you know a student could get involved in um and would be available, you know, it, it, it's, and it's, it's an interesting job. Um, well, well, and that's the kind of thing, you know, looking at just the variety of music careers that are out there. I think diversification is a really big word. I mean, the, the more kinds of skills you can have at least a little bit of experience with, no one expects you to be an expert at everything, but just being knowledgeable about some things that maybe not everyone else is that, that can put you in really good stead for, for yeah. jobs and apprenticeships and internships, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I, I think I, I, I agree with that. And the more we can teach students, it's, 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 it's not enough anymore just to teach the students how to play the Strauss Concerto. Because um, mm-hmm. probably playing the Strauss Concerto isn't going to get them a job in, unless they're like the, the, you know, the, the really, you know, the, right. the, yeah, but I mean, there are a lot of jobs. One, one person I follow, Aubrey Bergauer, she's kind of big in the orchestra world and, um, you know, she, she, she's a big advocate for this of, you know, learning everything, you know, learn how to put together a program, learn how to put together a, a poster, learn how to, you know, work with donors, learn how to, and, and all of this stuff that, I, I, I wasn't taught. <laughs> mm-hmm. A lot of it I figured out because some of this, you know, I, I've always kind of had a knack for like making posters and graphic design. It's just kind of been a geeky hobby of mine. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm learning a lot about because one of my jobs is helping program the season, you know, and mm-hmm. how to how to put together a good program, balancing the, 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 the budget of the soloists and the conductors and, and ba- balancing what the conductor wants versus what the music director wants. The music director mm-hmm. is my boss, you know, and, and sometimes it's it's a matter of these conductors are coming from Europe and they're thinking in a very European mindset, what would a European orchestra like to hear, which is not the same always as what a Thai audience would want to hear. Um, mm-hmm. And so how, how, do, how to make the orchestra marketable? And a lot of orchestras think about this too, always. It's always been like, how do we make this not a museum? It's not just a museum of music of, of old people. It's how do we connect with the community? How do we make this relevant? How do we, how do we be relevant today? Um, yeah. You know? Well, and I think that's, you know, as much of a challenge now as it's ever been just with everything that's been going on. So, no, that that's that's incredible. And I think I think you're absolutely the right person for that job. <laughs> well, I hope so. I, I, I honestly, James, I've 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 kind of lost myself in it. I've recently made the, the resolution that I to to we're, we're just at the beginning of our school year here, which is, is weird for you Americans. But we, we're just beginning. And right? I've made the, the resolution. I need to get back to being a, a horn teacher, you know, not, <laughs> not that I stopped being a horn teacher. 
but for for the last year maybe two years i too much of my mental capacities was was going to that and i was you know maybe only 20 percent horn teacher and i i i i'm feeling that's i've feeling and seeing that's that's not enough you know because I, I remember your podcast with doug you talked about the empathy you have to have with your students and for your students and how a student comes into your office for an hour and they play for you and um it should probably be more than you just throw out a few nuggets of wisdom and they walk away. You know, that, that would be a master class, you know, but a, right. a, a, a private lesson teacher, you know, I, I ideally, you know, is what I would do is I would kind of carry that lesson with me in my head and kind of think deeply like, okay, these are their problems and, and, and think about what, what is the best path, you know, and that, that takes mental energy and it takes time. It just takes time of sitting still and thinking about, you know, if you have eight or 10 students, um, and then giving thought to what, how to best nurture them, how to what the the sequence of, of etudes or sequence of solos or or you know stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. For me, it has to be more than just that one hour in the room. It has to be that plus then me giving digesting what happened. And and so I I need to get back to doing more of that. I've decided. Um, let the orchestra kind of go on its own a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Now, do most of your students come from Bangkok and the outlying areas, or do you pull students from all over Thailand and, and the region? All, all over Thailand, and in the last couple of years, we've been recruiting from China a lot. Okay. We, we have, I wouldn't say we have a lot of Chinese students, but I have one in my studio. Um, I guess we have 20 or 30 in the school, uh -huh. um, and, and, and other countries too. I mean, we're trying more and more to recruit throughout Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. um, and, and China, there's just, there's just so many people in China and, and so many horn players and, and honestly not enough good schools. And they're, they're, they're looking for places. Mm -hmm. China is an interesting place. I, I've, I've been to two horn festivals there um, recently, and both of them had like 800 to 1,000 attendees. You know? I mean, that's, that's, yeah. that, that's yeah. bigger than a, a horn symposium. You know, like yeah. LA yeah. was the biggest yeah. horn symposium. I think that was 600. And the, the, this one yeah. in Beijing, it was like a thousand. <laughs> it was like straight up a thousand horn players there. My goodness. So it's just a, yeah. a massive amount of, of musical activity going on there. That, and we don't know much about it because um, we can't. <laughs> the internet doesn't, doesn't let us. Right. But, but there's, there's some good stuff going on there. A lot of it good sounds, players. It sounds like someone could write an article or some articles about that kind of thing for the horn. Hey, well, who, who would that be? I don't know. Can you think <laughs> of anybody? <laughs> no, that's that that's that's certainly good to know. I mean, yeah, I think you know, there's this interesting thing. I mean, there's the British Horn Society, and then China has its own horn society, and then there's the IHS, and then you know, it, I you know, it, it we should all be one big world that you know, love, loves the horn and horn playing. And I, I, I feel like we could know more about what the other side it's other sides of the world are doing in, in relation to, to horn and horn playing. Cause there's a lot of really great stuff out there. And that's James, that's been one of the really big, you were talking about reasons I stay is, is just the, the, one of the big gifts of this job is, is just being able to see outside of the U S because I'm in Thailand and I, 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 I fly two hours in any direction and I'm in a different country. You know, mm -hmm. if you fly two hours in any direction, you're, in, you're just in the next state. You know? yeah. so, so still, it, it's still in Texas. It takes, <laughs> still in Texas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so, I mean, like I, I've been to China is fascinating there. I've been to Japan a couple times, you know, Japan, they also have their own horn society, but mm -hmm. you know, it's just, there, and I, you know, I've been to the NHK Symphony offices and I looked at their library, you know, to get some ideas. Their concert hall is beautiful, and of course, they're, you know, the level of playing in Japan is is huge. Tokyo has thirteen full time orchestras, if you can, if you can wow. believe that. Thirteen full time, and they're, they're not all of them are like really well, well paying, but they're still, you know, they're a livable orchestra, and NHK is, is the top one. Um, and so there's just a ton of activity going on in Japan that you know, we, we don't hear a lot about because they, like you said, they have their own horn society. They, they have their own stuff to do and it's, but it's really good. China is doing a lot of stuff too. Um, and just, and then just, I've, I've been to Indonesia a couple times to help their Indonesia is another country where it's, it's just starting. So they have a school in Indonesia. I've been to a, a few times and they're, they're trying to start an orchestra. Well, they have started an orchestra. Mm -hmm. And so I've gone to help and play, you know, and that's, that's fun too. Cause there is just a whole level of enthusiasm there, you know, of, of something that's happening at the beginning. And they're, they're, they're happy about that. And they're always so happy that you're there to help. Mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, it's, yeah. Well, that's good to hear. And I remember it's been close to 10 years now since, since we were there in Thailand, but I remember you mentioning something about learning the language was, was somewhat difficult, but I imagine you're, you're much more fluent now than you were. Yeah, you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. No, this is this is James. This is uh, if if, one, if I had to do it over again, I would I would from the start, I, I would buckle down and learn Thai. You know, this is kind of going back to finishing my story from the beginning of you know when I came here. I I, I did I never thought I'd be here for more than a couple of years. You know, mm-hmm. um, but then you know things. I was having a good time, having good opportunities. You know, but I was still like, you know, kind of one year at a time. First year, oh, no, it's not time to leave yet. You know, second year, yeah, no, one more year, you know, third year, maybe, okay, maybe next year I'll start applying for jobs back in the U.S. But then, you know, but then around that time I, I, I met my wife. And, and, and so that was kind of the end of the game. Then, you know, <laughs> you get married and you, and you buy the house. And now, now I like to say I'm a, a lifetime member. Uh-huh. Um, but, but that's one thing if I had to do it over again is I would buckle down and then just really learn Thai at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I still don't, I, I, I understand some Thai, but I'm, I'm, I'm not fluent in Thai. And, and to be honest, you don't have to be in Bangkok. Very, very few of my colleagues that are foreigners are, can, are, 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 can, can speak much more than me. Um, and in Thailand, the culture is very forgiving. In Bangkok, you can get away with using English quite a bit. Mm. But I, I, I'll be honest, I, I carry a, a certain level of guilt now that I've been here for thir- 13 years, and I, I still don't speak the language very well, and I, I, I feel like I should, and if I have a lot of, lot of, lot of time someday, I will do it. It's, it's the, the problem is, is the, well, the, I'll call it the excuse. My excuse is that it's, it's, it is a very difficult language, and it's not only learning to, to read it, it's learning to write it, because it does not use the English alphabet. Mm-hmm. So, for example, if you were going to learn German, you, you could look at German, you wouldn't know what it said, but you could at least know roughly how to say, say the words. Right. But it's, right. um, so th- this is my excuse, is like, I, 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 I would have to ask myself, what what am I doing now? What would I give up? Which of my the, the important things that I'm doing now would I give up to study Thai for at least an hour a day? Um, mm-hmm. And I, I, I just haven't made that commitment yet. And um, I, I, I should. I, I would like to. Maybe someday I will. <laughs> but just just uh, tell your wife to only speak to you in Thai, and then you'll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I did that, she would get impatient with me very quick. Her, her English is very good, and and if and in my bad Thai, she would it would just it would it wouldn't go well. <laughs> you could you could make a sitcom out of that. I think that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably. No, that's, yeah. That's really cool. Um, well, Darren, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I'm really appreciative of, of you speaking with me today. I, I wanted to ask you, um, kind of going back to maybe the, the beginning of this, this whole journey to, I guess, you know, in some ways it, it probably contributed to, to you being where you are now, you know, uh, this, this website that started out as uh, hornexcerpts.org and it grew out of your doctoral dissertation project at, at UW Madison. And now it's, you know, it's the most visited part of the, the International Horn Society website by far. And, you know, for those that if they don't know your name, you know, they should because that's the website everybody goes to when they've not learned their excerpt for that week. And they need to hear how it sounds as they go to hornexcerpts.org and it redirects to the IHS website. So maybe kind of, again, we don't, we don't have to take, you know, a long time on this, but you're probably sick of telling the story, but maybe kind of encapsulate how that project got from, you know, an idea. And then now it's this, this major thing. Um, I, I guess the idea probably started in my master's degree, which, uh, I don't know, James, we're old. Cause I'm thinking now, like my master's degree was like 25 years ago, something like that. It was a while ago. Yeah. It was, it, it was a while ago, but I, I remember like going to the music, I was in North Texas for my master's degree, going to the music library and fishing out some LP from the stacks mm-hmm. to listen to like, you know, to the, this 20 second excerpt and, and having to like drop the needle repeatedly to find that right. you know of course if you have time you listen from the beginning to the end but sometimes you just you you, you have like 10 minutes i just want to hear something some this excerpt from the middle of of, of this symphony you know and, and you're trying to find that excerpt in the middle of a 25 minute band on a and and i was like there has to be a better way than this right yeah and, um and so then at, at, at uw madison 
a, a gentleman named a, for, a, a for, former student, his name was Kendall Gray, had made some cassette tapes, mm -hmm. uh, something similar, where he just kind of took the excerpts and put them on on cassette tapes. But of course, do you remember cassette tapes? Does anybody remember cassette tapes? <laughs> um, you know, you, you have a 45 minute tape and you're just, it's kind of the same game, you know? So you, you, you know, like somewhere in here is Mendelssohn three, but you have to oh, pass it. You right. know, it just, you know, it's like, it's still a, a game of, of find, find the excerpts. And it's like, well, at this point there were CDs, you know, and that's how old this is. The CDs were kind of the new thing at the time where you could just punch in the track and boom, there it was. And so right. I was like, I'm going right. to, I'm, I'm going to do a, a just the special project. I don't think I ever intended it to be a, a dissertation, but just a special project where I go and you know, down in the basement of the Mills Music Library and and for you know four hours a week just pull pull stuff and put it you know put it on on DAT tape is what I did. And you remember digital audio tape, mm -hmm. and because that's what that's what was recordable. And then from from that, then I put them in onto CDs and it turned mm -hmm. into a set of of nine CDs. And then where was it going? Oh, and so then I had the idea, well, why not? Why not? My, my other kind of pet peeve of, of excerpt books at that time is they're completely re-engraved, you know? Mm -hmm. the, 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 what was it? The Le, Le Bar? Is that, am I getting that right? The, mm -hmm. there, there's two. There's the Mel Bay, the Pink, and the, the, the but, the, you know, sometimes they would put all four horn parts on, on a staff or two, you know, something. And the, the problem is it would look completely different than the actual orchestra part. Right. And right. I, I had a few experience where I would just, you know, I was practicing my, my excerpt out of, out of La Bar or Mel Bay. And then I'd go to the, like the, the audition for the, the ensemble, they put the original part and it would just throw me. Cause like, wow, that's, doesn't look anything like what I've practiced for the last two months. It's the right. same notes, but it, so I was like, well, why doesn't somebody make make a, an, an excerpt book? You know, cause most of the parts are you know in public domain now, just mm -hmm. using using the actual parts. And and so I I had done the CDs, so I, I went ahead and did the book too as a as a companion to the CDs. Um, and and then so that that's kind of when it turned into a, a dissertation. Um, and it was only intended to, to exist, kind of stay in the, in the library. But then I thought, you know, at that time, the Internet was kind of starting to come along. And I was kind of picturing in my mind, well, this, this would work well on the Internet, you know, because mm -hmm. you, you don't have to click a button on the CD player. You just click a link on the, on the computer. And, and so one summer, it was the, I remember the summer after I, I think, the summer after I finished, like, everything. I didn't have much to do. So I was like, I'm going to do this this summer. I'm going to make a website. So I, I did make a website. And, um, and... And I remember I announced it on the, at the time it was like the Memphis horn list, something like, you know, it was yep. like a Yahoo yep. group, something I don't know, <laughs> I don't remember anymore, but, and it just exploded, you know, it just boom, like in the first, you know, I was kind of shocked. Um, and so it, it's, it's, it, it was good. Since then, there's, there's a couple other horn excerpt websites, which I can honestly say they're better. They're, I don't know if you know what they are, and I can't remember off the top of my head too. Uh, uh, one of them is, is all banned. Uh, horn excerpts rep. Um, I can't remember the URL for it. I'll put it in the show notes, but it's, it's, it's dedicated to sort of, uh, you know, like I guess geared towards military band auditions, but it's, it's band excerpts. I've seen ones for trombone. There's one for horn and opera. That's, mm -hmm. that's a, that's another related one, but you know, I think it's clear where they got the inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and well, and that's fine. And and there 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 is one for Horn too. Um, I'll, I'll find it and send it to you because it's worth pointing out. Um, my 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 students most of the time they bring in iPads now, and so this, uh -huh. this student a couple months ago brought in the iPad, and he was working on Chike Five or something. I don't know what it was. Um, and it wasn't quite, it's was like, what website is that? And he was like, I could tell he was a little bit sheepish because it wasn't my website. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> actually, it was, it was good. I mean, I mean, that's fine. You know, that's, that's if, if like, I, I did the idea, which was now 20, 20 years ago, something like that. You know, so it's already, it's like, you know, whatever, whatever people have gotten out of my website, they've gotten their money's worth. If, if people <laughs> want to come, come improve on that, then please do, because I don't, I don't have time to, to make it better, you know? <laughs> So well, no, I, 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 it's what, and such, it was such a gift for you to, to let that be a part of the IHS website. Cause I mean, just in terms of the traffic, uh, that that generates <laughs> for, yeah. for the IHS, I think that was, that was an amazing thing. Um, and, one well, and I'll let you know, yeah, I'll let you know why is cause I, I, it was when I came to Thailand, it's like I, when I was in the U S I kind of managed everything, you know, I, I sold the books myself, you know, I got an order. I put the book in the envelope. I put it in the mail. Sure. Um, sure. when I came to Thailand, I can't do that. I can't mail stuff. And I was just like, let's just kind of 
offload this whole thing, you know? And so, um, and, and, and the, the Horn Society seemed like the perfect place to, to do it. Because I, I, at that point, I wasn't interested in, in making money on the books anymore. I was just interested in keeping them available. And um, and Dan Phillips, he's the, the Horn, the, the, the webmaster of the... Mm-hmm. And he, he's a genius. You know, I knew he could do it. And that way, it's just the way to keep it going that I didn't have to do the work, but, you know, people that wanted to do the work could do the work. And it's, I'm, I'm really happy that they have it, <clears throat> that they have it now. No. And I, I, I'm, I'm sure I, I speak for anybody that's used that site. We're very appreciative of it. So <laughs> I don't, I don't think a week, I don't think a week goes by that. I don't visit that, uh, that website and, and play an excerpt for a student or something. So, um, you know, on behalf of on behalf yeah. of all the horn players out there, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm I'm really happy to hear that one one of the goals of my dissertation was to do something that would be that would be useful, you know, mm-hmm. that the people would use because it's. I mean, you know, there's a, the, the 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 funny story of most dissertations. You know, they're they're read by the committee and then they go on the shelf. You know, they and, make a nice doorstop or a they, yeah, they they make a you know they 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 you know they they, they look good. Uh, you know, like oh, there's my dissertation. But you know, I'm, I'm I'm happy that I'm happy that you know this is has gotten traction and, and come in useful. That's that's um yeah, it's, it's very it's, good. It's it's something to be proud of for sure. And. Yeah. One other thing I wanted to mention, since we're kind of on the IHS track, and that's kind of the usually the way I wrap these things up, is uh, uh, you know to talk about what the IHS has meant to you, and maybe uh, encouragement you might have for anybody who's kind of on the fence about you know well, I don't know if I want to join the IHS, or maybe I'll just go to the website and use it for free and <laughs> that kind of thing, because there are so many free resources out there, but. You know, are are there? What would you say to someone to kind of gently encourage them to to be a member of the International Horn Society? Well, I I, I can tell my story about what is done for me. It's it's about what I can do. Is you know, I, I've been a member of the IHS since since high school, since before I could understand what the articles were talking about. <laughs> um, but when when it, the the point where it became like a, a kind of a critical part of my career is when when I came to Thailand and when my students started going and you know especially for students in thailand they've they've never experienced anything a, a symposium you know mm-hmm. anything like that where there's like you know a, a critical mass of just amazing players right in one place and a critical mass of of, of well, not even a critical mass of all of the the horn makers right there mm-hmm. you know and then also gave them a stage to kind of show what a, a stage to the world you know showing them what they were capable of doing um and through all of that, that's you know that's the, the attention my students got and the exposure they got was great. But it, it of course, what your students do reflects back on you. Mm-hmm. Um, and see, whatever success I've had, I, I feel like I owe to my students. How do I say it? You know, of, of me being somebody somebody might know has come through the IHS. You know, and then for for ten years, I did the the online music sales. Used to be uh-huh. online porn live, but um, and that that was a lot of fun. And so that was you know, and I, that I I really enjoyed doing that for ten years. And of course, Gina is doing that, and and you are doing it too. And so yeah, but bringing that back to the Horn Society is they, they've it's been the inspiration for doing all of that. It's you know the the the, the the horn symposiums have been the reason the to, to to work hard to, mm-hmm. to to make things happen you know the um and of course the horn call is is, is great um I, I i always still like when i get the horn call i just i clear my schedule that day <laughs> and I, still, <laughs> I really do i just like okay you know just hold, hold my calls i'm gonna read the horn call for the next 45 minutes you know it's just a pleasure to do um yeah that's, so that's, that's great to hear darren and i, I really yeah. appreciate that well, good. Well, thank you so much for speaking with me today. Yeah, it's it's been a lot of fun. It's, it's good, good seeing you. Good, good talking to you. Likewise. <laughs>